Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're on Apparently our... we're doing a video. <laughs> yeah, I started a video without telling you. As usual. As usual. Uh, we are walking uh, to catch a cab, I guess. And then we're going to go to the office, have a meeting. But um, it's pouring ass rain right now. Ass Monsoon rain. season. Yeah, ass rain. Clear it's coming ass from an rain. ass. Wow. <laughs> Our office. So this is over the dish. It's kind of like a food court. It just has a bunch of really good uh, eateries all put together. And it's near Doksugung uh, Palace in Seoul, near City Hall. So it's quite popular with uh, especially office workers, actually. What are you gonna get? Let's find out. What'd you get, Marie? I got dos tacos. Dos tacos. Uh, it's a Mexican burrito. It's a fried vegetable burrito, and luckily they were able to take the cheese and sour cream out of it, so it's a completely vegan burrito. Yeah, and I got some spicy champong. Champong, champong. Oh yeah. And I got, um, it was like a set and it came with four pieces of uh, fried mandu. Yum yum. Yum yum. Yum yum. There's a nice avocado in there. The tortilla is uh, like fried or something. Oh, pan fried or something? Yeah. Grilled? Yeah. Champong is known to be very spicy, so I'm excited. It's a very good spicy broth. How spicy is it? On a scale of 1 to 10, probably like a 7. Got yummy pieces of seafood, got some squid, I see some kimchi, huh? And of course some noodles. These noodles are made in-house, I was watching the guy make it in the back there with the machine. Some seaweed. There should be some other seafood in here buried somewhere, but anyways. It's a seafood tampon. This is just like a nice mandu. We go ahead and dip it in the sauce here. Yum. So like vegetables or something? Vegetables and, and glass, glass noodles. Oh, okay. Welcome to my life. I'm all done and Corey has like three quarters of it still there. <laughs> I'm a very slow eater. And probably halfway through he's gonna tell me he's too, fill, too full to finish. That's probably true too. <laughs> it sucks. Very yummy looking cakes here. Wow. Oh cool, you can see the chef making the cake. Oh, she disappeared because she saw me. Oh. Cool. Alright, we just finished eating. I'm stuffed. It took me like 15 minutes longer than Marie to eat because I'm super slow. And I'm super fast. Yeah. It's a problem <laughs> on both ends. Yeah. Anyways, he yeah. survived. And uh, so we're heading across the street from over the dish to where? So this place is probably the most amusing coffee sh shop I've ever been to in Seoul or elsewhere. Um, as far as I know, it's owned by a former uh, musical actor, so you can you can kind of tell there's a lot of uh, shenanigans going on in there. Let's, Theatrical flair. Let's, let's go take a look. Wow, this place is decorated pretty cool. Uh, 
I'm from Japan originally. Japan? Originally, yeah. yeah. But I'm American. Oh, you can try to You too. Ah, really? Ah, really? Ah, really? Ah, really? Ah, are you gonna tell me you're gonna be fun? Uh, I'm dancing. It's gonna be fun. It's difficult, but I'm dancing. Okay. I'm dancing. Dancing. I'm getting <laughs> hit by rain. Are you? Uh -huh. you Thank you. What did you get, Marie? I got a Dutch, a Dutch Kenya ice, and just a normal ice americana. Yay! Done. Done. So this area is bordering along Doksugun Palace. And then there's a school in here, and some embassies, and this and that. The Seoul Museum of Art is actually right here, too. And last time I went by, they had an exhibition about DreamWorks, and I think they still do. Look. Oh yeah, you can see the panda, Kung Fu Panda. They're stumpy. by uh, Gwanghwamun Square, behind us, that way. Uh, but we're not gonna go there. We're gonna go to the Cheonggyecheon. And everybody but us has umbrellas, but actually we have two umbrellas. We have two umbrellas. We're just not using them. We're not using them. So <laughs> actually, the cell phone that we're filming on is getting wet. But we're getting we... wet. Look, you can see the water on my, uh, my shoulder. Okay, now it's getting kind of like... <laughs> I think we need to use the umbrella. It's coming down now. Yay, rain! Every time we use the phone to film shit like this, it always starts to rain. Like, remember Taiwan? <laughs> yeah, but the this camera, it's the a phone, rain. is actually quite a water, well, sort water, of water resistant. resistant. Yeah. yeah. Apparently much better than the last version of the phone, so. Yeah. So, let's look. So this is the Dong A channel, channel A, and they're uh, broadcasting something in here. I think they're preparing for a broadcast. Uh, it looks, yeah, it's a news, news thing. Say hi, not. <laughs> <laughs> They're so used to uh, people peeking in there, I guess. Yeah. So we, we saw in the news that the Tonggitan, the stream, is flooded. Yeah. So we're gonna go check it out. We figured today is as good a day as any to die. We're not going into it. <laughs> oh yeah, so they're not letting people inside, you can see here. They're not letting people inside. Can you see the gate over there, how it's, uh, yeah. it's blocked? And the the, the neon... The neon uh, yellow green thing. Do not enter. Yeah, so there's the news crew filming. Ah, the water level went down. So earlier, the Seoul government posted this picture, and you could see that this entire area was like flooded over inside the stream. But it looks like it went down now. We missed all the action. This is the beginning of the Cheonggyecheon stream, and so down here it was all flooded. You can see there's like debris left over after the water went down. But this was all flooded. This weather is pretty typical. It's called, uh, it's the rainy season, or in Korean it's Changma Chol. And uh, yeah, everyone expects rain during Changma. All right, Marie has to go. I have a meeting, so I'm gonna check out now. Have yeah. fun. Okay, see you. See you. Bye. Wow. PVA to the max. <laughs> Hi guys. Okay, Marie just left me and it just started downpouring. I wonder if that's a sign. Anyways, I'm completely soaked. 
from the knees down and my left side, my entire like left shoulder and arm are completely soaked. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do some walking around and kind of take you guys along. Okay, it's kind of flooding over here. That's actually a sidewalk that people can walk on. But yeah, overflowage. Walking through uh, this area by Jonggak Station, and we did a walk around video here, Marie and I, last year. You can check out that video right here. But uh, this place is always hustling and bustling in the evening times, and just like tons of flashy lights and stuff everywhere. Very similar to like Shinjuku area in Tokyo and. Lots of other parts of Asia where these kind of vertical signs and other things exist. And there's a Starbucks, of course, everywhere. All right, so Marie went to her meeting and I just kind of followed the Cheonggyecheon down towards Dongdaemun. And I was just kind of go for a little walk, trying to walk off all that jampong I ate. And um, I wanted to show you kind of uh, this cool area that I know about but I haven't done a walk around video yet. This is in Uljiro and it's essentially like an electronics district but it's not just electronics it's also hardware and fixtures, LED lighting, like all kinds of crazy stuff. Power tools, um, metal machinery shops, stuff like that. Um, printing. It's a lot of industry related things. Yeah it's a very visually interesting place and it's crazy that so many of these places around here sell sort of the same thing. So it's a very specialized neighborhood. A lot of uh, older style structures and stuff here. You can see this is pretty old and grungy looking. But there are just shops in and around everywhere in this area. modified so that it could carry large bundles of things and deliver them in and around this uh, area. A lot of people work together to you know supply different parts and materials. You know I've walked around this neighborhood like a gazillion times in the past like three plus years and every single time it just uh, never ceases to amaze me at all the different shops and stuff like Look at all these little alleyways and stuff, just full of shops and vendors. Lots of just crazy stuff. 
Yeah, and so here's a modified motorcycle turned into this kind of like rickshaw thing. And uh, they got this covering to protect from the rain. But uh, these are modified so that they can carry loads of goods as well in and around this uh, neighborhood. And there's just like a ton of these things everywhere. So as you can see, the Uljuro and Chungmuro areas are just like hustling and bustling, full of activity, lots of industry, lots of cool little rickshaw uh, motorcycle things. And um, yeah, it's like totally visually interesting and the sounds and everything. And these areas are very old, very, very old. I think almost 100 years old at least. I've had my fun for today, just kind of a walking around for about an hour. I need to go home. I need to take the dog out. I need to edit. I need to work on our website for our business, etc, etc. Time to go home. So just took the taxi home, but I got off a little bit early because I wanted to show you guys this awesome view from our neighborhood of Seoul. Check this out. This is the view from our neighborhood, looking over Seoul. Very cool, huh? Just behind and past those uh, modern looking buildings right there is Seoul Station. So this is uh, Huamdong, the neighborhood Huamdong, and Garwaldong, Namyongdong. So it's all here with this nice landscape view. And this is fire. Uh, this is the most antisocial one out of the three cats. Um, she's a rescue cat. We can't touch her. She's totally chill like this. Like she doesn't mind just coming and investigating us while we're chilling. But if we try to go near her or walk towards her or try to touch her, she immediately runs away. And this is Marie's baby, Neko. Neko is very social. You're very chill. Annyeong. Oh, are you having a little a little daytime nap? Yeah? Are you having a daytime nap, Neko-nim? Neko. It's funny, she's a Korean cat, but her name is Japanese. Neko. Momo. Where's Momo? She's a Momo. Annyeong, Momo. Me, 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 me. Okay, you're taking a nap. Kapto, annyeong. Hi, baby boy. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Do you want to go outside? You want to go for a walk? You want to go for a walk? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 hold on. Oh, face rubs. He needs a haircut. Oh, face rubs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old man. He loves to pee on everything. When we um, first rescued him, he's 10 years old, we real we found out that... Um, so Gapto... Ah, 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 Gapto likes to pee literally on everything. And it's because he wasn't fixed for 10 years. His um, old family, I guess, couldn't afford medical care for him. So uh, he is microchipped, and so we were able to determine his medical history, and he was never neutered. Oh, pee time. He was never neutered, and he had never received any of his, like, shots or anything since he was a puppy 10 years ago. And um, we know that he comes from kind of like a really poor family. His previous owners were very poor. They collect cardboard for recycling and stuff like that. And so, anyways, he was in poor condition, and uh, we rescued him, paid for all his uh, medical treatments and stuff like that, got him neutered, but uh, he still has his old habits of marking his territory, literally every chance he gets. And so, yeah, 
I don't understand how a little dog's bladder can hold so much pee. The nice thing about going for walks is you get to see the neighborhood and all the little planter pots and stuff like that people use to decorate their homes and just make it look nice. Like this one's pretty impressive. Lots of flowers, all kinds of different plants. Okay, here's another house that has like a lot of plants up on the wall. Very pretty. It's nice to see this as we walk along every day. Kaptori, jibe kaja, jibe kaja. Okay, here we are back together again after a long day. And uh, I got my moo moo on, so it's it's relax time, relaxation yeah. time. Marie loves to chill in the moo moo. It's free. It's like very freeing and chill. I guess the the next best thing would to be just like have no clothes, which is not um, an option because, you know, video. <laughs> <laughs> so it's dinner time. We're tired. We had a long day. There's a lot of rain. What we did was we ordered food. From Bap Sarang. Bap Sarang. Rice love. Bap. Rice love. Sarang. Anyway, uh, Korea, you guys might know Korea delivers food all over the place and they deliver all types of food. And what's better than Korean food being delivered to your house? And so in they Korea. actually. Yeah, <laughs> while you're in Korea. And so they actually deliver it like this, like in a freaking cooler to your house. And it is loaded with yummy deliciousness. So today, we're gonna see what we have here. Wow. Got this nice, is this yours or mine? Yours. Ah, this is mine. So this, we'll, we'll take a look at it just real quickly and then um, show you guys. So big pot there. We've got Marie's dinner here. It's a smaller one, but very yummy. They gave us some seaweed and two things of rice and they're really really hot mm. they give us a newspaper to like wrap our trash and stuff in some side dishes yeah and it's all like as you can see it's all wrapped in like saran wrap but they're real dishes yeah it's like they're not plastic dishes yeah this is like for real so we usually like to just make a table out of the actual cooler we do have a small like floor table out there, but the cats love hanging out and uh, hanging out on it. Chopsticks are metal. Metal, not utensils. wooden. Yeah, really cool. It's legit. Legit yeah. Korean food. So Korean food in Korea, very very cheap. Delivery. Um, is there any delivery fee for Bob Sadong? I don't think so. I think I you think just so. have to order at least a, around ten thousand won. So it's like I don't know. What is it, like, nine, like $9, $9 or something? If you order that much, they deliver for free. You don't have to tip in Korea. There is no tipping culture. My coworker taught me this. Using your utensil, metal utensil, and then on the rim of the bowl or whatever, you just rub it like this, and all the plastic, like, comes off. And that's an easy way to, like, rip the plastic without burning your fingertips and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was just, like, going for it like this, but I can tell it's really hot, so I'm going to go ahead and just do it to mine, too. There, and then you can just Whoa. peel back. Look at that. Ta-da! It's like a car with one of those, like, a convertible. It's like a convertible. <laughs> it is kind of like a convertible, yeah. A uh, convertible. Okay. We're having I English problems. I haven't said that right word now. in a long time. Yeah. Okay, so Marie just opened her rice, and then uh, she is opening the seaweed, the kim. Uh, here's our banchan. It's still in the plastic, but we'll open it later. Right. And what is this? So um, I got Cheonggukjang, which is essentially, it's similar to Tuenjang, like it, it's kind of like miso in some ways, um, but it has, like, you can see the the bean, the soybeans inside, um, the fermented soybeans are a little, they're whole. Yeah, it's fermented, right? Fermented soybean? Yeah, exactly. And then there's some kimchi, kimchi and uh, tofu and hot pepper and this is as far as i know this is um vegan or vegetarian i'm hoping so anyway <laughs> if not then i'm you know i'm screwed because of the fermented soy it does have a kind of a stronger smell right than other things and from from what i've heard from other foreigners who aren't used to this kind of smell they think it smells like feet 
but to us it smells freaking delicious. It smells like awesome. Yeah. And then here on mine, the Byo Hejangkuk, we got some uh, radish leaves and stuff like that. There's a lot of it there, which adds some really great flavor to the soup. And then it looks unassuming because it's just like, wow, what's in this like bowl of soup? Ta-da! There's all this meat. So this is like pork spine with a ton of meat. And um, it's really delicious, very flavorful. And this meat has been cooking for quite some time. So it, it actually just like comes like right off like very easily from the bone. It's time for us to eat and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys later. Bye bye. bye, -bye.